Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is a continuation on the economic issue found in topic three, inflation. Inflation is a sustained increase in the general prices in an economy. Previously, we learned how to measure inflation. Check out the link in the description below to learn more about that. Today, we'll talk more about the types and the causes of inflation. The first type of inflation that we'll explore is demand poor inflation. This type of inflation happens when there's an increase in aggregate demand without an increase in aggregate supply. As you can see in this diagram, when the demand curve shifts to the right, it causes price levels to increase. Inflation is worsened if aggregate supply is not increasing at its price inelastic, as in, the economy is running at full capacity and can't produce any more. Demand poor inflation happens because an increase in aggregate demand in this scenario would mean that there's an increase in spending in the economy, but with no increase in production, consumers just increase prices to bid for existing levels of supply. One example would be when Australia was experiencing the second mining boom in the early 2010s. The boom caused increase in incomes and spending in Australia and saw inflation go from the GFC low of 1.7% in 2009 to a peak of 3.3% in 2011. The next type of inflation is cost push inflation. Cost push inflation happens when there's an increase in production costs, such as increase in oil prices or wages or decrease in productivity. Producers will pass these higher costs onto consumers by increasing prices. Higher production costs or drops in productivity cause the aggregate supply curve to shift to the left, causing higher price levels. Typical examples of cost push inflation in Australia would be caused by increase in energy or oil prices. Cost push inflation could also be caused by increase in wages without increases in labor productivity. I like to think of demand pull and cost push inflation as the two main ones to learn because all the other types of inflation found in the syllabus can be explained by these two. Here are a few more types and their explanations. The syllabus also includes imported inflation, which is an increase in prices due to the increased cost of imports. This is often caused by a depreciated dollar, because this means that we lose purchasing power and imports become more expensive. Not only are the imported consumer goods more expensive, but the cost of imported inputs increase, causing production for Australian firms to be more costly. In short, Imported inflation is a form of cost push inflation. Another cause for inflation in the syllabus is inflationary expectations. That is, when high inflation is expected, people will actually cause inflation to increase. Here are two explanations. First is that it causes demand pull inflation. You may remember from year 11 that when people expect prices of goods to increase later, they'll increase demand for that good today, causing demand pull inflation. Secondly, if workers expect their cost of living to increase, they along with their union would push their bosses for a pay rise in advance. Unless this pay rise is matched with an equal increase in productivity, this will lead to cost push inflation. So you can see how expectations of inflation often leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy. So those are a few more types of inflation and their causes as prescribed by the syllabus. Here are a few more types and causes that you might come across. An increase in taxes could lead to inflation because it increases the cost of production and aggregate supply curve shifts to the left. For example, the GST was introduced in Australia in July of the year 2000. It meant a 10% value added tax on almost every good and service. This increase in costs caused cost push inflation. But also, there was an increase in demand in anticipation for the price increase, causing demand poor inflation as well. Another example was the introduction of the carbon tax in July 2012, as it also saw subsequent increased inflation. Other government policies such as increases in minimum wage without increased productivity will also lead to the cost of labor increasing and causing cost push inflation. In fact, any government policy that lowers efficiency in an economy will lead to cost push inflation. Lastly, you may have heard that excessively increasing the money supply can cause inflation as well, like in Zimbabwe or Venezuela. This is called monetary inflation. This happens because money supply increases faster than the rate of economic growth. And this means that there's just more money chasing the same amount of goods. It mirrors demand pull inflation. I hope my explanations and examples have made it easy for you to understand the causes and types of inflation. Next lesson, I will continue the series on inflation by looking at some of its effects. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, comment, and share the video too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.